Harry Jackson is a sculptor. Many say he is the foremost living sculptor of the American West. His name is often mentioned in the same breath with Remington and Russell. Queen Elizabeth has a Harry Jackson bronze. One like this was a gift from President Gerald Ford. Jackson's works don't come cheap. They range from $1,200 to $185,000. John Wayne had eight bronzes by Jackson. Their friendship started when Time magazine commissioned Harry Jackson to do a sculpture of John Wayne as the Marshal in True Grit. Wayne and the artist corresponded for a while, then Wayne invited Jackson to Mexico where he was making a film. Duke, what do you think of this? Well, Harry, I'm uh, very proud that Time chose you to put old Ty and me up there for posterity. It's just great. Here. All I need is a patch now, and I can get right in there with it. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> I need that carbine. A Jackson sculpture similar to this was in John Wayne's hospital room when he died. He had nothing else in the room. He had no flowers in the room. He wouldn't let any gifts in from his children or anything like that. He had that piece on the windowsill, so as he looked out the window, he could look at it and see it silhouetted and see it in the morning light and in the evening light. That was the last piece he looked at, and he had it on his windowsill. And I'm so, I'm so proud of that, I can't, uh, I don't have words for that. The thing that impressed Harry Jackson most about Duke Wayne was the actor's relationship with his children. You know, he, he was somebody, and he raised a bunch of wonderful children. I'm a father of four, going to be five here at the end of this month, and uh, I'm really aware of that. You know, he's left all of his children in very fine state, not financially, of course that too, but I mean, but they, they all respect each other. Very few people have talked about that aspect of John Wayne, and I really admire that. Um, He's left his will in such a way, he's trained his children in such a way, he's left them a, a, a corporate uh, structure, and he's done it in such a way that they all help each other. They all help each other. Uh, Mike is the boss, they really listen to him, they advise him, he listens to them, and that's a marvelous way, to, and they're out of uh, three different wives, you know, so that's, that's a tough one, that's a tough one. He was one heck of a man. You know, not just because he's a big old stout, wonderful, athletic guy who symbolized the West, but because <clears throat> he was a father and he was a good American. He was a man that believed in what he was. And he proved it by leaving all those children getting along with one another. I hope I can do one-tenth as well as that man did. The Marshalls, based on John Wayne's True Grit, are Harry Jackson's most popular works. In one and a half years, these pieces increased in value from $5,000 to $18,000. In Harry Jackson, John Wayne must have seen a character as colorful as many he played on the screen. At 14, Jackson left his home near the Chicago stockyards. He hitchhiked to Cody, Wyoming to be a cowboy. His first artistic endeavors were as a Marine combat artist during World War II. After the war, he lived in New York and took up abstract painting. But he decided that really wasn't the way he wanted to express himself. A trip to Europe inspired him to become a sculptor. For casting his bronzes in lost wax, Harry Jackson has two foundries, one in Cody, Wyoming, and another in Italy. He divides his time equally between the two locations. As he says, I must be the only person in Italy who drives a Mercedes with Wyoming license plates. Harry Jackson sculptures are featured in Dallas at the Alterman Gallery. Smokey Bites the Dust has nothing to do with Burt Reynolds and his Smokey movies, but Jimmy McNichol says there are some similarities. With well, Smokey and the Bandit, you know, Burt plays like, you know, hotshot driver of the town and he, and he steals the sheriff's daughter. But in my case, I'm like the, um, like the punk driver of the school and I, um, I go to the, the homecoming parade and steal the queen, the homecoming queen from the parade, and she happens to be the sheriff's daughter. The movie has car chases and spectacular crashes. But Jimmy McNichol wants young people to realize that kind of dry 